Now we'll explore the importance of MRI in differential diagnosis. Who should be referred for MRI and how does MRI help in detecting the nature of the lesion? MRI combined with electroencephalography is essential to confirm the diagnosis of epilepsy. The International League Against Epilepsy recommends that, with a few exceptions, all patients with this disease should undergo MRI or CT. However, MRI is preferred because it provides more soft tissue details than CT. Patients with typical forms of primary generalized epilepsy or benign focal epilepsy in children with characteristic EEG features usually do not benefit from imaging. Those who respond to anti-epileptic drugs, AEDs, may also be excluded. There are two clinical conditions that should prompt imaging examinations in patients with seizures, newly diagnosed patients and patients with long-term epilepsy who have not undergone MRI for a long time, especially those with refractory seizures or those who are unresponsive to anti-epileptic drugs. This recommendation also applies to patients with long-term epilepsy of unknown etiology. Anecdotal evidence supports this understanding. For patients with epilepsy that lasts for decades, surgically treatable lesions can be identified on MRI, including low-grade indolent tumors. Patients with key findings in neurological examinations, including patients with seizures, fever, persistent headaches, cognitive changes, and recent history of head trauma should undergo MRI as soon as possible. Focal epilepsy in adults should be regarded as a clear basis for emergency neuroimaging. An important function of MRI is to define the cause of epilepsy and characterize the nature of the lesion. By doing so, MR images enable clinicians to determine whether the lesion is static or ischemic or the product of congenital malformations or progressive diseases, such as malignant tumors or diseases related to Rasmussen's encephalitis. This information is essential for clinical decision-making. It can help with prognostic consultation and determine potential treatment strategies and surgical planning. Now let's define the protocols to be applied during MRI when epilepsy is suspected. After finding the diseased area through clinical and EEG examinations, MRI should be performed. A well-designed protocol for patients with epilepsy will generate information, which in most cases will show optimal volumes for virtual assessment and maximized output data for post-processing. Two types of epilepsy patients are usually referred for MRI patients suspected of having temporal lobe disease, and patients with extratemporal lobe or neocortical epilepsy. According to the relative specificity and consistency of clinical imaging and pathological findings, the first group is larger and more uniform. In contrast, neocortical epilepsy presents differently in clinical and imaging methods and pathological substrates include multiple cases. Current recommendations indicate that both groups of patients should undergo three-dimensional T1-weighted volumetric imaging and three-dimensional fluid attenuated inversion recovery, flare, sequencing. Three-dimensional acquisitions can more accurately assess discrete structural lesions by simultaneously evaluating different sections of the brain. This multiplanar analysis can analyze the measurement of hippocampal volumes and detect abnormalities 
that suggest focal cortical dysplasia, which may be subtle, but can be identified if there is thickening of the cortex, abnormal gyri, and poor boundary recognition between gray and white matter. In most clinical situations, 3D images should be run after locating the hippocampus because the resulting volumes may be beneficial for setting the angle of subsequent 2D anatomical MR sequences. The latter should include axial and coronal imaging. For patients with suspected temporal lobe epilepsy, the coronal slices should be angled perpendicular to the long axis of the hippocampus, and the axial slices should be in line with it. In cases of extratemporal epilepsy, the 2D imaging sequences should be angled along the anterior commissure, posterior commissure axis. In addition, 2D volumes must be acquired with in-plane resolution of less than one millimeter to locate and characterize small and subtle lesions. This orientation accuracy is critical because the volumes are not obtained isotropically. For example, only by analyzing 2D imaging sequences accurately angled along with the long hippocampus axis can the morphological structure of the hippocampus be thoroughly evaluated. It is important to remember that although contrast enhancement may be helpful in the initial assessment of adults with possible malignant tumor-related epilepsy, there is usually no need for routine contrast enhancement in patients with epilepsy. A still ambiguous anomaly in unenhanced imaging could be a reason to use contrast. However, potential hippocampal sclerosis is an absolute exclusion factor for contrast in MRI. Many pathologies are causally related to epilepsy and pathognomonic findings on MRI may help support the differential diagnosis. Even a negative scan may indicate that idiopathic generalized epilepsy could be diagnosed. For example, Focal cortical dysplasia can be identified by cortical thickening, abnormal gyri, and poor gray-white matter boundary recognition, and the epilepsy caused by limbic encephalitis may be manifested by an enlarged and hyperintense amygdala. This slide shows examples of images acquired with sagittal T1 fast spin echo and axial T2 fast spin echo sequences. Here we have two sets of images. The first one acquired with an axial T2 star sequence and the second one with an axial diffusion or DWI sequence. Now we can see examples of images acquired with axial STIR and axial T2 flare sequences. And finally, this slide shows a first set of images acquired using a coronal T2 flare sequence a second set of images acquired with a coronal STIR sequence, and a final set acquired using a coronal T1 3D sequence.
The last slide on differential diagnosis presents an optimized model of MR protocols useful when epilepsy is suspected. The experience at the Department of Epilepsy at the University of Bonn Medical Center can be used as a model for the establishment of a community-based epilepsy MR protocol. It meets the guidelines for clinically meaningful epilepsy evaluation. This six sequence protocol that includes three-dimensional T1 hemosiderin calcification sensitive, two-dimensional flare and T2 short tau inversion recovery or STIR imaging sequences helped in detecting 99.4% of all epileptogenic lesions visualized by MRI during the pre-surgical workup. The latter two sequences are angled along the long hippocampus axis and the anterior posterior commissure or ACPC lines. The most sensitive sequence was the 2D flare, which detected 84.8% of eleptogenic abnormalities, while the 3D flare provided useful anatomic orientation and input data, very valuable in post-processing. 